Dearest mother and father, we thank you and we love you. Thank you for life on this beautiful day. Please guide us and show us how to best serve you today and every day into eternal glory for the joy and upliftment of universal heavenly and earthly peace and harmony. Thank you. We love you. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. All right, here we are in the kitchen. So the... Uh, uh, what? <laughs> here we are in the kitchen and these cats are here again. Uh, did, you, did you really think they were going to go somewhere else? They were just in the bedroom. Not Maisie. No, man, never Maisie. Hi, Maisie. You don't come to the bedroom anymore. Maybe it reminds her of when she wasn't feeling well. Oh, that's not so. She just knows it. The shit is going down in the kitchen, baby. Yeah. The 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 snacks are going down. Yeah. Maisie, hi. Mm. How are you, little pumpkin puss? Are you getting ready for uh, Thanksgiving? Yum yum. Yeah. She is. We're gonna make uh. Carbonata noodles again today because they came out so good yesterday. Watch out, sweetheart. Are we doing something different with the recipe today? I I think slightly. We you know you can't you can't yeah you can't do the same thing every day. Again, every time I'm in the kitchen, I wet these sponges. You know why? Because they're great. I use them for everything. They're great, and they're made of plant fiber. A natural dyes. They're not going to do anything bad to anyone. Not anyone. Not even Maisie. Even if she instigates it. Maisie, <laughs> I got to take a picture of this. She's got her head in the spokes of my fucking wheels. Maisie, come on now. You're really pushing this like in a fucking very disturbing way. Maisie, come on. Chris, get her out of there. <laughs> Did she have anything to eat today? All right. Looks like mommy's got to give a uh, family style or else she's murdering herself by way of sticking her head in the thing. Can you open this for me, Chris? Mm -hmm. Do never put your head in the spokes of my thing, Maisie. Never do that again. Yeah, yeah. Suicide attempts now I got to deal with. Got enough of that going on. Oh, they're all here. Hi, Maggie. How's the barbering going? Mm. Here, if you could just fix him a plate. Maisie Daddy's doing it right now. Look. I guess I should pick her up. Hmm. She probably wishes she was being hugged right now. Let me give her a hug. Come here, Maisie. Come here, Katie. Oh, sweet Maisie. Let's get a picture of her in Mommy's lap. Hey, Maisie. Where are you? There she goes. Mwah. Hello, Maisie. You're a sweetheart. Look, Daddy's... Oh, she's leaving. She don't... She has enough. Great. Yeah, put it as close to the litter box as away from my chair as you can. Just kick it all over there. Oh, the big guy's here too. Mm, oh well. Here's the other guy, number four. Ba -ba! Let's get a close up of him. He's hiding behind they Chris's be leg. Getting, they seem to be getting worse at the no. family style. Well, they can be bad at family style, but. You know, Bo Booba does feel bad. He gets left out a lot, even though he's fat. That's okay. not really, that's not really fair. Booba! He's saying, why don't my daddy love me? Why doesn't my daddy love me anymore? He's giving everybody family style. And I got nothing, nothing, I got nothing. Oh, but I do got something because I'm Booba. And I'm being fed after a while, too. All right, so let's get... Let's get a good picture of this. Oh, it's cute. Ah, oh, we got them all, right? Mm. Calling occupant. <laughs> oh, Vincent Planetary Cats. 
call, <laughs> calling occupants of interplanetary extraordinary cats. We've been observing you. And we know you got more food than you're letting on. That's what they sh probably are thinking. Well, they got so much food, those people. They're so fucking cheap with it. Meanwhile, we feed them constantly, like, all day long. Out of laziness, I think we never did. But they were, they never begged as much as they do. It's like they, they know. Mommy's in a wheelchair. She's got nothing better to do than feed things all day. You'll see they'll walk away and they'll be leftovers. Okay. I'll believe that. I do believe it. It happens every time. I think they just... But, you know, the thing with, with the animals, our animals anyway, I really feel it's true. They, they equate the food with love. And then just like, oh, they love mommy. Show us we love you. Show us that you love us, right? So it becomes like this nice thing for them, you know, for the people. Now, something nice for the people. Now, we have a project we're going to do today because we have an oil container, a brand new oil container for gourmet oil. But we're going to be putting some rubberized plumber tape on it, on the, on the base and on the middle section so that we have a... Uh, so I see her. Okay. I'm very aware of this cat's tail. Believe you me. She doesn't like my foot up her ass, but it's there for a reason. Oh, by the way, product placement. Get this hot sauce. It's a fix. No artificial ingredients. Excellent, excellent hot sauce. Now, here's the story. Mm. Vietnamese recipe. Vietnamese hot sauce. Johnny, how's it going? It's going great. All right, so here's the tape. We made sure we got this color because it was going to match the hot sauce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things have to match in this place, right? So, you know, our, we got the orange. We got a lot of green, too, and we're going to be doing more green, you know, to match that lid. We have a green paint that matches that lid perfectly, and we're going to be doing some detailing on this uh, wooden thing. Mm -hmm. That's down the pike, you know, when we're all right, when we're, when we're feeling better, right? <laughs> Getting all of our things out. So this is going to get that thing, right? We have to be careful. I didn't know this thing was going to be as tall as it is, right? And unwieldy. And the bottom is very slippery. So we're going to be reinforcing the bottom and reinforcing the middle section, it will also come in handy just in case it falls. It could break still with the tape on it, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's saying do a, a row on the bottom, a row in the middle, and a row right here. This is a very delicate point, yeah. Um, pro again, some crazy product placement. This rubberized plumber tape, it's $3 a roll if you buy two rolls right away. And it makes a great gift, too. You would not believe uh, the... Hold on, we're going to pause just a moment. All right, so uh, we, we just had to pause for a minute because I wanted to get this... This is what, you know, we started the project. Right, right. So we, we're doing the rest of the taping, and John wants to talk. Yeah. He wants to talk, folks. Mm. Oh, here's that great raw honey. Again... For only eight, seven, eight dollars a, a jar, it makes a really nice stocking stuffer. It's, it's raw honey is va very valuable for your health food uh, and your medicinal cabinet. Do some research on the benefits of raw honey, and then you'll know what 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 you can use it for. Um, Johnny, yeah. Um. Oh, so the last time we were in the kitchen. I had kind of like a, you know, a met, an emotional purging, and I was like giving hell to various family members, and because the wounds were still fresh from a from a bizarre exchange I had with my biological mother, you know, and the fact that she never seemed to give a shit about what happened to me, and just to recap, and she was calling because she was so worried about my father-in-law, who she really doesn't even know. She doesn't really know him. I married her, the guy's son, but she doesn't know the guy like he's her best friend. 
And she never, ever, ever asks me how I'm doing. She doesn't want to hear how I'm doing because she would, a light would be cast on her because they ignored my medical needs when I was a youngster. From ranging from everything to my eyesight to my ankle to everything, you know, everything in between. You know, so much so that I, you know, whatever, whatever. You got to stop, I guess, blaming your parents. I'm not, I just, I'm not blaming them either. I know you have to take account for yourself in this life. No one's going to do it for you. But I just, it just felt like she rubs it in my face how worried she is about every stranger that she has ever known. And I, she does not give a shit about me. And that's always how it's been. And, uh, and even when my brothers would bring home a girlfriend, both of my older and my younger brother, you know, I would just be not, a, not alive to her. Like this person was the new friend in her life that she was going to fucking love more than me. And yeah, that's true. She, she brought those feelings out in you the other day when she called concerned about Ted. Right. What the fuck is with this tape? You believe what's going on with this? All right. This is absolute insanity. Yeah. This is the strongest fucking plot. I don't know that you should be doing that right now while you're getting upset. All right. It is the strongest plumber's tape I've ever used. It's like... <sighs> Please, don't get me started. I... So what are we talking about now with my mother? What are we saying about this? She just called you. <laughs> right. I was inside getting ready to feed the birds. I was getting dressed and getting ready with John to get into my wheelchair and the phone rings. I thought it was maybe my doctor who makes house calls that, you know, so hang on, please. So to say the very least, Lena uh, felt irritable still from yesterday's uh, goings on. Yeah. Or the day, whatever day her mother called. All right. <laughs> you've, been, you've been out of sorts since you heard the sound of a voice. Yeah. Because from the first syllables out of her mouth, that the frantic concern she felt for my father-in-law, it was such a frantic, oh my God, what are we going to do? The, the world is coming to an end and, and I love him so much. <laughs> and I've been crippled for seven years. And I tried to enlist their help to, to help me to... To, to lobby to get me a ramp for the front of this house so I could get to my doctor appointments. And she said, no, we're not helping you with that. That's, you know, that's your problem. Meanwhile, they're sending a stranger's kid to fucking college. It, it, right, so, it, and a million other things too. Like, they are, they are very well, they were very, they're not as wealthy as they used to be, but they still have some money, but they have, they squandered much of it foolishly. Right. Yeah. Cause she, they're both idiots with money. I don't think they know what they're doing. Right. So they had millions, but I don't think they got millions anymore. Right. But who knows? Then I asked her, don't, she acts like she doesn't know what I've been up to for seven years. Oh, you gotta, you're gonna, you're getting in your, oh, I'm glad you're getting in your wheelchair, okay, now, and you, that's good, you can now have, enjoy yourself, yeah, everyone's enjoying themselves. My father-in-law is enjoying himself with no legs, I'm enjoying myself in a wheelchair. I said, have you been watching my videos? I know she has been too, and she lies. The woman lies. She lied about everything. Even my father used to say, why do you lie constantly? You, your mother lies. Your mother lies about everything. Yeah. She cannot stop lying. She lies about everything. Every stupid thing you can imagine. You can imagine the bigger things. Oh, well, I know you do music and stuff, but I didn't know about the wheelchair. You didn't know about the wheelchair. I'm wheeling around in every fucking video. What are you talking about? You want to act like you don't know what's going on in your life. You want to act like you don't have a daughter in a wheelchair. Because then it would be some kind of reflection on you. Right, Mommy? Don't you dare call that thing, Mommy. That's my, that's my real mother saying that, and I won't. I'm being, I know, you're being facetious, you're being, I'm your mommy. Hi, mom. Yeah, everything's good, everything's good. 
mother and father are right here and you can vent and it's healthy. Right. Mom, what was I talking about? Because I don't even know. All right. Here's what you're talking about. Can you, can I be that, uh, that thing, that thing? Yeah. Mommy's going to be that thing. <laughs> that actually works really well. Yeah. I'll be that thing. I'm that, I'm that woman. I'm your mom. Right. Can you make it bigger? Yeah. All right. Here I am. How are you? Okay. Mom. Yeah. Which one is daddy? That's he, he can be the sunshine. Because he's my sunshine. Okay. So listen. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, you need peace and quiet because you can't hear yourself think. It's it's bad enough, you know. It's going to start ripping up garbage in there and stuff and you're going to lose it. Right. There's absolutely no reason for it, right? But he, he does it. I don't know what it is. But he does that. When you're making videos, I don't know why he does that. Nobody does. Mm -hmm. I love those canisters, Lena. And I love that pot. You have such beautiful things. You keep everything beautiful and 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 beauty, just beautiful. And your and your and your cup, everything. Mm -hmm. And you're and you're beautiful. And your mother has never told you that you were beautiful. Your biological mother. But I'm here to tell you that you are very beautiful. And your feelings are valid. And your mother's an idiot. And when you just saw her number come up on your caller ID on Tuesday, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving 2023, at around mm, 1.30 p.m. it happened, I believe. But you can check. I was the one that hung up on her. You didn't even pick up the phone. But she got a funny message from me. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this was the weirdest thing. I grabbed the phone and went to pick it up. And I was kind of in an agitated mood. And at that moment on the radio, the Beatles were on playing uh, Honey Pie. <laughs> honey Pie. Honey Pie. <laughs> Honey pie, honey pie, honey pie, honey pie. And so it was started blasting on the radio super loud. And the phone disconnected before I could see who it was. And when I checked the caller ID, it was my biological mother, but I didn't talk to her. So what she heard was just the phone being answered. So she didn't get to leave a stupid message. Yeah, that was that was it, too. I was like, she's not even going to I'm not even letting that bitch leave a message. So what she got to hear was the phone pick up and she was like, hello, hello. But I didn't even know it because honey pie was blasting in her ear and then it disconnected on her. And that is how the powers that be protect me from this fucking family that I came from. Mm hmm. I don't want you dealing with her anymore. You sent gifts for Thanksgiving. You set, sent a beautiful gift for Thanksgiving. You even sent her a gift for fucking Halloween, Lena. A very generous gift of gourmet candy. Now, that's enough. Mother tells me this all the time, and I never learned. Well, I'm going to tell you one more time. And if you send her a Christmas gift, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to knock you sideways. I'm not sending her one. Mm. Don't send one thing for Christmas. She had enough Christmas presents from you over the years. Theater tickets. Restaurant visits. Gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. Jewelry. Knickknacks. Beautiful, valuable paintings. Mm. She appreciated nothing. She gave away half of the shit you gave her. 
Just like your stupid mother-in-law did with you. It's not because they don't like the gifts, Lena. They know the gifts are beautiful. They just don't want to be reminded of what great taste you have. So they don't hold on to the things that you give them because it only reminds them of what a special person you are. That's how sick these people are. Mm. Now, Christopher, after you made the last video, said, oh, you should be like Yoko Ono and uh, only say nice things about people. Hey, don't believe what you hear, Christopher. Yoko Ono talks a good game, but she don't always walk the walk and she did not always walk the walk. But Lena was right in saying that Yoko, her, her uh, quote about smiling whenever you can, that's valuable. The other thing, don't believe it for a minute because Yoko didn't practice it. And when you don't practice what you preach, then it doesn't make any sense, right? And for someone who also says that everyone should smile, I haven't seen that woman smile too much. Now in her later years, you see some smiling, but uh, that's because she's out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Hi. Hello. Uh, hi. Ringo's here. Yeah. Lordy, lordy, yeah. Lordy, Miss Claudy, yeah. Listen, so you're making lunch. Just finish making your lunch. We'll talk a little bit right now, and you don't have to... Just be careful about the stove, yeah. You always got to have that nice uh, elbow. Once you support that elbow, yeah. Uh, I know, Richie, thank you. You support the elbow, yeah, uh, you can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong. Once the elbow, and you're not, and, uh, you know, don't get afraid to get your hands dirty. Oh, I'm getting my hands dirty, kid. Mm. Oh, the shrimps, baby, they look nice. Yeah, but you didn't uh, heat them up too much. No, it didn't. It's all right. Yeah, I'm a little bit verklempt, you know. I'm, I'm kind of like, right, so, so getting back to my mother, what, what about her? What about her? You don't speak to her anymore. You don't pick up the phone when she calls. And you almost did it by mis... Ugh, don't bite me, John. Don't. Mm. He's losing it, Lena. I know. You don't pick up the... F and, if you, and if you try to pick it up by mistake, I won't let you speak to her. And that's what I did today. No more speaking to her. No more. Nothing good can come of it. Yes, I know. I see that. I see that now. Mm. You know, and nothing good ever will come of it. Right. She's not going to change. You had that uh, Dr. D. He even wrote a song about him. He told you all those years ago in 1995 or 4, whatever you went to see your first therapist. What did he say to you, Lena? What did he say? Your mother is never going to change. And once you realize that and make your peace with it, you can move on. She is never going to change. She is incapable of change. People like her don't change. They die that way. And they alienate people and they destroy their lives and they destroy the lives of their children if their children let them. Mm -hmm. These are the words Dr. D said to me. And you embraced that, those words then. And you got divorced against their wishes because they didn't want you to divorce your first husband. They loved him. They thought he was the, an amazing catch. And they were, your father mocked you. You can't, you can't hold on to a great man like that. The Nazi, right? In front of the whole family, he instead of being supportive of his daughter who was going through a very trying time. He told you you were worthless because you couldn't hold on to this fantastic man. He said it at the dinner table, in front of your brothers. I think one of the one of the girlfriends was sitting there too. These are the people you want to talk to on the phone? No. That's right. No. That's right. No. So, what's your next move? Do mm, you want to show what you're making? Um, yeah. I dropped a shrimp on the floor, but I'm thinking Bunny's going to get that one, yeah. 
See, I dropped that shrimp on the floor. We're making fettuccine uh, with mushroom sauce and shrimp. Mm -hmm. We use a little hot sauce. And um, it, it looks beautiful. That close-up is crazy, yeah. Do you need to heat it up more, you think? I don't think so. No, I don't think I'm going to heat it up more. I think it's it's good at that temperature. Mm. And then what's your next move after that? Um, feed the birds again for their afternoon feeding before it rains because it's supposed, supposed to, yeah. Supposed to get a lot of rain in there tonight. You're going to have a storm. It's going to be fun. John loves those. He's going to snuggle you in bed. You did a great, uh, you, John, and Christopher did a great job putting together Goodwill bags. Phenomenal job. Mm. How's that taste? Tastes amazing. Mm. Phenomenal job. Crazy good. Yeah. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I know Christopher doesn't always want to eat shrimp, but I, I think he's, if we have enough, we could share some of those. All right. Okay, so you know what I see in store for you? Yes, Mommy. You're going to finish the tape job on that stupid thing, right? You're going to finish your coffee with John, right? You're going to put that thing on the side because you're going to put more, you're going to put nutritional yeast in it, so don't throw that away, right? Okay, Mommy. What else? Mmm... You're going to pick that shrimp off the floor and rinse it because Bunny is not eating that shrimp. You are. All right. Really? What if he comes in and wants it? We'll see. We'll see how he does with that. Where is it? It's like foggy. Yeah. Yeah. They're foggy. All right. They're foggy. Foggy and groggy. Yeah. So she won't call you back anytime soon because that scared her. That weird little thing that happened with the phone and honey pie blasting in her ear. Because she knew damn well that was the Beatles, right? Just like she knew it was her sister being channeled when you called her from the hospital that time. When they ignored you when you were in the hospital uh, with the broken shoulders and the dislocated spine. What did she do? She fucking uh, blocked you. So that you could never call them for a year until Christopher said, well, why don't you unblock her? Oh, we don't like her calling here, Christopher. We only like you. We don't like her. We like you. Come visit us. Yeah, that was cute. For like two years after your accident, Christopher's uh, hanging out with them. Every spare fucking minute he had bringing her flowers for Mother's Day. See, this is like a deep seated weirdo guilt going on. And you had to fucking sit and watch that until it was like, all right, that's enough. You're not going to visit them anymore because I will fucking have a heart attack if you go visit them one more time and act like they're your friends. Even if they are your best friends, Christopher, I don't want you going over there. It really took a lot of doing to get him to stop. He was doing it behind your back. Why? That's what I'd like to know. That's called parental guilt taken to an extreme. Not only does he have tremendous parental guilt with his own parents, he has it with yours. He feels like he owes them something. Yeah, he does. They gave birth to a gorgeous girl that he keeps disrespecting by hanging out with them. You are not giving him any of that fucking lunch, by the way. All right. The things he did were bizarre. And you were forced to put up with it because you were a fucking invalid and dependent. Those days are over. Mother has spoken, Lena. Yeah, I know. I hear her. Well, you better take heed because uh, she, she really wants to know that you, that you hear her. I hear you, Mom. I'm not dwelling on the past and I'm not making you dwell on the past. I'm opening up your eyes and making sure you don't take any steps backwards, girl, because you are stepping forward and you are not doing anything except stepping forward until you end up stepping right out the door of this place and not looking back. And that day is coming. 
That day is here. Yes, mommy. Amen. Amen. You okay? Yeah.